Assalamu alaikum. Dear fellows, today I am going to discuss with you about the speech of General Nasir Khan Janjua uh, at the Oxford Union, which was a wonderful speech. Uh, I really loved it and uh, thought that I should share the learning points with you. Let me introduce General Nasir Khan Janjua. He remained the commandant at uh, Balochistan and he also has commanded in uh, different other areas of Pakistan as a three-star general in Pakistan Army. He is also former National Security Advisor and uh, worked a lot against the insurgency in Pakistan at different levels. So the points we are going to discuss, points we are going to uh, talk about, they are actually discussed in his speech at the Oxford Union. The first, uh, I have divided into the parts, so we'll try to complete them within uh, 15 minutes. The first point, I'm sure that it would bring a lot of learning for you. And further, I would definitely recommend you to watch his video on YouTube uh, and see that, you know, how more things you can learn from there. The first, he talks about Pakistan role in USSR war that how Pakistan participated and why it was needed for Pakistan to be the part of uh, in that USSR war against the Russia. He talks about number two start of madrasas and their use in Afghan war that uh, how madrasa culture was introduced and the uh, Mujahideen at that time they were being called Mujahideen and sent in the USS war to support Afghanistan. Here he also talks about the relationship of Pakistan and uh, Afghanistan which is thicker than blood but misunderstood. Breakage of USSR in 14 new countries. Here we have to understand one thing that this war was somehow a war of two superpowers according to my understanding but America would have not won this war without the help of Pakistan. Pakistan was the front country beside Afghanistan to win this war and break USSR in 14 new countries. Here it's really very much uh, interesting thing General Janju assures that it is all about the uh, sale of narratives nowadays where it is blamed that Pakistan took the U-turn in the matter of Taliban and in the support of Haqqanis. So there is need of understanding the narratives because it's, these are the narratives sold internationally and to change the minds of people and to show that how other countries can be brought down in the name of whatever they gave in. He talks about a blessed land. Pakistan, when you talk about Pakistan, see nowadays internet has solved too many things. You can google that Pakistan is a blessed country with beautiful landscapes. But uh, an image created internationally it is that Pakistan is a country of extremists, terrorists and only these things are here, nothing else can be seen. But when you see the landscapes of Pakistan, northern areas of Pakistan, the deserts of Pakistan, the rivers and the sea of Pakistan, you see the Gawadar, you just get amazed that Pakistan is totally a different country, not as it is being just shown in the international media through different kind of narratives. Talks about the importance of Taliban in Afghan government. See, when we talk about the instability of Afghanistan, I feel that the biggest reason is not giving the place to those who are having, you know, more than 42% of the land occupied 42% of the land in their power still and they are Taliban. So here he talks about 
that uh, there is need of a stable government and that is only possible that the current Afghan government and Taliban can have talks and work together for making one strong government which can stable definitely definitely the which can stable Afghanistan and stability of Afghanistan is really a great uh, thing can happen for Pakistan as well as for the rest of the world he talks about the terrorism and uh, our response see Pakistan has faced terrorism for a long time now and where we have uh, faced it quite bravely, quite courageously. We have given more than 60,000 lives. Uh, these are the figures shared, but I guess they have crossed uh, 70,000. And uh, in which there are our soldiers, in which there are our law enforcement agencies, persons. We have our civilians in a large number. Even though, even you can see that we have uh, a big number of children. And such incidents like uh, APS, Army Public School, Peshawar happened. We have a long list of, you know, attacks on our shrines, attacks on the mosque, attacks on churches, attacks on temples. So Pakistan has faced a big time terrorism and responded it very well. Talks about the refugees in Pakistan. The Pakistan is a country having largest number of refugees. Largest number of refugees, most of them the Afghan refugees. The number crosses a, more, a million. More than a million refugees are on our land for more than three decades. And we have shown our hospitality. We have shown our service to humanity which needs to be accepted and appreciated internationally. Talks about the routes between Pakistan and Afghanistan. He says that there is not a single route or there are not few routes. There are more than, uh, there are 128 routes between Pakistan and Afghanistan. And 128 routes, you can understand that uh, these routes need security as well in such kind of condition these are the routes from where loopholes are found by the terrorists and they come to they cross the borders easily and then they do the terrorism and they attack the attack different kind of places here the big thing is discussed that is about the great success in the karachi operation Karachi, as you know, that is the hub of uh, business, hub of trade for Pakistan. But instability in the last few years made it quite disturbed. The business community started moving their businesses to other countries, winding up, you know, investments from Pakistan. So here it talks about the operation cleanup in Karachi, which gave, you know, resurrection to Pakistan, a new life to Pakistan repair birth of trade uh, we can see that more than 95 percent now everything is clear and the life of karachi is back as really it deserves he talks about the baloch he talks about the sense of deprivation that how it was which really gave you know more ignition to the negative subnationalism and that negative subnationalism brought a lot of trouble to the country where how how the response was there that they were being hugged they were being welcomed they were being brought to the dialogue and a lot of them surrendered and and just joined the pakistan army as you know as the pakistani citizens so this was the actually way this was the way how they responded to the angry baloch and also talks about that started the schools with the name of Omideno for their children, which was another good gesture that Pakistan is for them, Pakistan belongs to them, and they belong to Pakistan. Talks about the dismantling terrorist infrastructure in Balochistan, which was a huge task because until unless their infrastructure were there, it was very hard to bring the peace to Balochistan and the rest of the country. 
Janal Janjua talks about the war of narratives as I earlier talked about that now the world is facing war of narratives. We also call the fifth generation warfare. That something is being spoken that much, something is being highlighted in such a way, something is being propagated in such a way that people start believing it. That really, yes, this is what is happening and we need to do something. While the things at the ground are quite different, totally different. He tells about Pakistan as misunderstood and underestimated country. Whenever internationally talks about that Pakistan is a nuclear threat, he says that Pakistan is a safe country. The nuclear assets are in the safe hands and safer than anywhere else. Talks about the Pakistan's involvement in the Middle East, Middle Eastern country conflicts going on. He says Pakistan is very much separate. Pakistan is not into anything uh, which is what are going on in the Middle Eastern countries. Talks about the conflict uh, of Afghanistan. He says that there is need of closure of this conflict. The approach should be closure of Afghan conflict, not the winning approach because winning approach cannot bring the solution and there is need of closure of this conflict. About the Pakistan, he talks about the role of uh, military influence in Pakistan. He says that it is actually uh, that our government, a civil government have not grappled the art of governing and due to which majority of the citizen, they see the second option look towards the military for some kind of betterment. But the democracy is growing fast and uh, getting its strength and in coming days definitely there will be the better results. He talks about that if people are not secure, country cannot be secure. It is very much understood, it is very much understandable that definitely the security of people is the security of country. So the priority is always given to the people. He talks about the dialogue is the only way out between Pakistan and India because both are nuclear countries. There is no any other way they can have, you know, in 21st century. He says that if we cannot be friends, let's not be any enemies. And it is really very touching kind of sentence that if we cannot be friends, we should not be enemies anymore. We must, you know, utilize our energies, utilize our finance uh, into the development of public so we can have the better generations in coming time. Talks about different kind of blames by India and definitely from the Pakistan side too that, you know, the things are from the both sides in this way that whenever they blame Pakistan in the Bombay attack, there is a Samjhota Express as well. And whenever it talks about the Bombay attack, they just try to ignore the Kashmir, you know, conflict, that the Kashmiris are somehow not but directly needing their own land. And when definitely they feel the insurgency by the Indian army, so I personally say that it is the response. But it has to come to an end now. He talks about that who are the fighter in Afghanistan. Tells that the fighters in Afghanistan are actually cousins. If you go to the roots, you will find out that they are cousins fighting with each other. And I'm sure that if a chance is being given, if the Afghan government thinks about it seriously, so they can brought to the table and definitely peace can be the destiny of Afghanistan. In the, uh, he talks about the future of Pakistan, that the Pakistan is coming as the largest connectivity in the world, bringing world together. Pakistan is bringing world together because if you see geographically, Pakistan has a great kind of position where it can connect the world. And things have started like we have the CPEC, uh, China-Pakistan economic corridor going on and as well as many other projects are on the way where definitely Pakistan will be. Uh, we have the Gawadar port too which is you know uh, going to completely function soon 
सो ही टॉक्स अबाउट वन ब्यूटिफुल थिंग ही सेज इन दी एंड दैट एक्चुअली इन दिस एरा वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट सक्सेस ऑफ the world cannot be defeat of many other countries the success of the world will be will be and is directly connected with the success of the other countries we can talk about success of afghanistan we can talk about success of pakistan we can talk about success of india it is all dependent it's all connected with each other because if we all will be successful definitely uh, the world will be successful well let me conclude it it needed actually i had a plan that i should speak on the speech of uh, janan nasir khan janjua uh, at least at least for a couple of hours because as much he has spoken it cannot be brought in you know 15 to 16 minutes but still i tried my best that what points i learned further i would again recommend you suggest you to just go to youtube and watch the complete speech of janan nasir khan janjua at the oxford union really it's amazing and i believe this is what the narrative of pakistan is this is what how we are you know building pakistan and it is needed that all of pakistanis try to understand what our national narrative is according to which we need to have peace and prosperity and peace and prosperity of pakistan peace and prosperity of afghanistan means the peace and prosperity of the world the world need to understand this thing as well that war against terrorism is not only the war of pakistan it is a global war and we all have to win it together at the end i would request you to subscribe our youtube channel and give your comments more suggestions uh, with the name of atik raja share with your friends hopefully in coming days we will be bringing more videos to you 